So to illustrate the interpretation of the power spectrum or the square modulus of the Fourier transform, we're going to consider the following function, which is a sum of uh, signs of different frequencies. So the first one has a frequency of 25 hertz, second one 50 hertz, and the third one 65 hertz. And they each have different coefficients attached to them. If you were to plot this uh, superposition of signals, you will get something that looks like that. So uh, essentially a, a wave train where it's not clear what the uh, constituent frequencies of this signal are. If you were to take the Fourier transform of this function, and find the power spectrum, so the square modulus of the Fourier transform, what you get you get is you will get three peaks at each one of the constituent frequencies of this function. And the relative heights are associated with the coefficients attached to each function. So you'll notice at 65 Hertz, you have the smallest peak because that function had the smallest coefficient associated to it, namely one over square root of five. And the peak at 25 Hertz is the largest one because its coefficient was the largest among the three. So one interpretation of the Fourier transform is that it gives you the constituents of a signal through its power spectrum. Put another way, if you were given uh, let's say a certain color and you wanted to find out what colors had to be mixed to give you that, you could compute a Fourier transform and it would give you the mixture of colors that resulted in uh, the color that you were given. All right, so uh, in the next video, we're going to start looking at some useful properties of Fourier transforms that uh, allow us to more efficiently compute certain things, uh, certain quantities that come up a lot in, in applications in physics, chemistry, and engineering.